Hi everyone. Welcome to our first lesson on the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem is a theorem that deals specifically with right triangles, which of course are triangles that have a right angle in them. And let's just for clarification's sake say that a right angle is an angle that is exactly 90 degrees. Do me a favor and please make sure that you begin today's notes in your MP notebook with the title, The Pythagorean Theorem, as well as the formula for the Pythagorean Theorem. Pause your video right now to write these down. Okay, the next thing that I would like you to do is I would like you to make the sketch of the right triangle that you now see um, into your notes right underneath your title and your formula. You're going to make that sketch exactly the way you see it, labeling the three sides A, B, and C exactly the way that they are labeled. The two sides that form the 90 degree angle are sides A and B. And those sides are known as legs. The two legs will always connect to form a 90 degree angle. The third side is the longest side and that's going to be called the hypotenuse. Okay, and that sure is a mouthful to say. Um, please make sure that you're spelling that correctly in your notes. We will always recognize the hypotenuse because it will always be the one that's directly across from the right angle. Now, the Pythagorean theorem, that's our a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, really states that the two legs squared, that's our a squared and our b squared, that when they are added together, their sum will be equal to the hypotenuse squared. And that will always be true for any right triangle. Okay, let's take a look at our first example. Please make a sketch of this right triangle with the dimensions and variables that you see. Okay, can you tell from looking at the diagram which type of side we're going to be calculating? If you said a hypotenuse, you are absolutely correct. Okay, the two sides where they give us dimensions are here and here. These are the two sides that form the right angle. So these are our two legs. Remember that um, our legs are always going to be uh, labeled A and B in our formula. And it really does not matter which one is A and which one is B. All right, I'm going to always start by writing the formula for the Pythagorean theorem. It just makes it easier when we're substituting in the values that we know if we start off with that formula. Okay, now it, I just mentioned that it does not matter which of the two legs is A and which of the two legs is B. I'm going to start with 12 as my A, so 12 squared, plus 14 squared is going to go in for in replacing my B squared, is equal to C squared. I'm going to leave C as C because C always stands for the hypotenuse, and that's the side we do not know the dimension. That's the one we're calculating. Okay, when I square my sides, I, I know that 12 squared is equal to 144, and 14 squared if we punch that into our calculator, is 196 is equal to c squared. Okay, we're going to add those two um, squares together, and 144 plus 196 is 340. Now, some people mistakenly stop right there and say, okay, we're done, our answer is 340 centimeters. But that's what c squared is equal to, and we need to calculate what is C equal to. Okay, so in order to figure out what C is equal to, we need to take the square root of C squared. Okay, remember when we square root something, what we're really doing is figuring out what number times itself is equal to that. So if I square root C squared, that'll be equal to C after I square root it. 
Now this is an equation, so whatever I do on one side of my equation, I'm going to do to the other. So since I square rooted c squared, I will square root 340 to figure out my c value. Now when I punch in the square root of 340, it turns out to be a big long decimal. Um, I'm going to round my answers to the hundredths place, and the square root of 340 is equal to 18.44 centimeters. And we're done with that one. Alright, let's take a look at a second example. Okay, in this example, um, please sketch your figure into your notes. And by looking at the diagram, can you tell what type of side we're going to be finding? Will we, will we be finding a hypotenuse or a leg? Well, this time we are finding a leg. Remember the legs are the two sides that come together to form the right angle. So this time we're finding a leg. I'm going to start off once again by writing my formula. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And since we're finding a leg, I'm going to leave a squared as a squared. The other leg is 6. And the hypotenuse, remember across from the right angle, is equal to 15.5. So we'll put c squared in as 15.5 squared. All right, once I square my terms, my b and my c term, I'm going to have a squared plus 36 is equal to, and I don't know about you guys, but I don't know 15.5 squared off the top of my head. So when I punch it into the calculator, I got 240.25. All right, this time we've got an extra step involved. We cannot calculate the square root of a until we have our a squared term isolated. That means I need to do an inverse operation to get rid of that plus 36. So my inverse operation is going to be to subtract 36 on both sides. And when I subtract 36, um, I'm going to add 36.00 to help my subtraction. My inverse operations are going to cancel each other out. And now a squared is isolated on the left. On the right, 240.25 minus 36 is equal to 204.25. All right, don't forget that last step here. We are going to square root both sides so we can figure out what a is equal to. Square root of a squared is equal to a. And the square root of 204.25 if I round it to the hundredths place, is equal to 14.29, and my label here is centimeters. All right, so the length of the missing leg is 14.29 centimeters. Okay, let's take a look at one last example here. Please trace this diagram into your notes, and do you know what we're looking for? Are we looking for a hypotenuse or a leg here? You got it. We are finding a leg. We can tell that because, remember, our two legs are the two sides that come together to form the right angle. So, let's start with our formula. a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. All right, since one of our um, legs is the missing um, dimension, I'm just going to leave a squared as a squared plus 11 squared. And that's going to be equal to c squared. Remember, our longest side is always the one across from the right angle. So we're going to fill in 23 squared in place of our c squared. All right. 11 squared is equal to 121. And 23 squared is equal to 529. Remember, we cannot do any square rooting until our square term is isolated. So we'll do an inverse operation to eliminate plus 121. So we will subtract 121 on both sides. That's going to leave me with a squared is equal to 408. All right, don't forget that last step here. We need to square root on both sides. 
So the square root of a squared is equal to a, and the square root of 408 turns out to be, and I'm rounding to the hundredths, it turns out to be 20.20, and my label is inches. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think you're ready to give this a whirl. Please go ahead and do your checkpoint questions. Check in your uh, checkpoints and your notes with your teacher, and have a wonderful day.